What's up everybody welcome back to another quick video on Logic Pro X. I am Clormo and today I want to talk to you not only about the new update that came out from Logic Pro X which is version 10.4.2 but I want to specifically talk about two things about that update which are related to Smart Tempo and the mixer so I'm not going to waste more time I'm just going to jump in right away. I have a project here that is just going to serve for showing what I want to tell you about those new features but don't pay any attention to any of the settings this is just for for show and tell but the first thing that I'm going to show you is related to smart tempo and it has to do with dragging or importing stems into your project and smart tempo analyzing those multi-track stems as a whole and then defining the project tempo from those it would also create a down mix file of that which will be embedded into the folder where the stems came from and that's going to be used for your analysis and do other some other neat tricks like just telling logic what files actually contribute to the analysis and which ones done so so that's a pretty cool feature and the um the way that we deal with this is that you have to make sure that you have the you adapt project tempo in the smart tempo settings and then in the smart tempo project settings you have to make sure that you if you're importing audio files you must have them either on on plus align bars or on plus align bars and beats for this to work and and to actually access the feature Notice that we, uh, of course, we have this option ever since Smart Tempo was introduced, this set new recordings to. So what I'm going to show you here also works for if you are recording a multi-track session. You also set that here on either or of these two, and it should work the same way. Notice that there's all, also a new option down here where you can... Um, create a smart tempo multi-track set which is what i'm going to do in a second and i'm going to talk about this later on a separate video want to make a separate videos for this including a more in-depth look at everything having to do with smart tempo so now i'm just going to go and drag some stems from a random project and You have to make sure that in, on this dialog, you d choose either create new tracks or use existing tracks. And then this is the kicker here. You have to make sure this checkbox is selected so that you indicate to Logic and the Smart Tempo feature that all the files that are putting here are stems from one project. And then you click OK. It's going to do the analysis. And it determined that's 82 bits per minute. Great, everything lines up, that's perfect. But in the if, in rare event that you do this and you get some weird tempo and things not lining up correctly, since you use the adapt tempo feature and you check the box for making sure the logic understood this, all the stems were from one project, now you have a multi-track set for these stems and the way that you access it to edit it and edit the analysis for the smart tempo is you select a region you do right click you go to tempo and now you have edit smart tempo multi-track set and when you go there notice this column is the important one contributes to analysis so everything is contributing to the analysis if, if you think about it here, I have a bunch of things that are pretty much the drums, which is obviously going to help make the smart tempo analysis easier. But I also have some sample and I have some, some other stuff. Either way, the analysis came out good. But in the event that that doesn't happen, you can choose here which tracks actually contribute to the analysis and you all you do is when you uncheck some of those let's just do an example and you're gonna press this analyze button and then smart tempo is gonna reanalyze those and make sure that the tempo adapts to whatever 
you are using to contribute to the analysis. This is good because sometimes if you just have like um, some ambient noises and stuff like that that don't really have a discernible tempo, they might throw your analysis off a little bit and you may not want them to contribute to the analysis. So you just uncheck them and then analyze. Nothing's going to happen here in my reanalyzing, right? Because all of these files were recorded at the same tempo and they came up from the same project, et cetera, et cetera. And the project tempo um, or the file tempo, it's embedded in all of them. So everything's going to work out. But this is useful when you're collaborating also because if somebody gives you some tracks and for some reason they don't tell you the information that relates to the tempo, then when you throw things in here, um, things may not line up perfectly and you can use this to quickly make things line up especially if you concentrate on just using the drum parts to determine your um, smart tempo analysis right so um, what else so that's pretty much it with that uh, function and again it should work the same way if you're doing a multi-track recording but again i'm gonna do separate video uh, and a mini series talking about the, all things smart tempo so the last thing I wanted to show you related to the 10.4 update, it's related to the mixer and it's pretty simple. When you bring up the mixer, uh, you now have this new feature here, which is sends on faders. And what that allows you to do is I only have one send right now, boss one, which is this small reverb that I already had on the file. And let's say that I want to throw this guy to that send, right? In the past, you could just control the amount of send that you were throwing onto the track by coming here, right? But now you can also put this on and I only have one send, right? So it's gonna come on and now I can control the amount of send also here down with this knob on the actual track. And that's gonna be independent of um, what I do with the actual send or auxiliary track. But not, not only this, you can also, if I go and just hold uh, and click on the bus, there's a few other things that you do, um, other options that come here like copy, fader to send, copy pan to send. I'm gonna do this in a separate video, but this is the kicker that I wanted to show you is independent panning. So now you have also the power to independently pan, for example, here, this reverb onto the send. So now if I just, um, if I do this, what, what I'm doing here, the reverb is gonna be panned minus 24 or 24 to the left in logic's scale independently of the track why is that important because before when you didn't have this and you panned your track your send as a hold right in this case this reverb would pan completely with the file right with the with the dry signal with the instrument with the track now you can independently pan your track to the right, for example, and then your um, your reverb in this case to the left. And now that will give you a little bit more creative freedom. And it's very interesting because you can kind of explore with different movements because, you know, obviously that's going to be automated. You can automate that and then throw the sense around in different directions and pan your track in different directions and create some interesting possibilities there. But my my quick video here doesn't make it justice. I need to uh, actually go in and prepare a, a good example. I just wanted to um, give you a quick rundown of, in my opinion, the two most important updates or new features that were included with this 10.4.2 Loyal Pro X update that came out today, September. 27th and there's a bunch of other things and stability improvements that were included just going to apple's webpage 
and for uh, Logic Pro X's support page and, and check the whole list. There's there's just too many for me to mention here. But those two things that I just showed you right now, I think are most important out of this update and are pretty, pretty, um, I guess, powerful in the sense that they give you more options one with the mixer to include movement in your productions and then smart tempo dealing with not only stems that you can import but for multi-track recordings but i will need to create separate videos for those i just wanted to get this out as soon as possible as usual uh thank you for all the support i think at this point 730 something plus subscribers uh just please subscribe to the channel and share this out so i can reach more people and if you had any further questions for the time being just leave them in the comment section or any other of my social media pages as you know by now i'll see you in the next one peace out people